It was a hot July afternoon when Geppetto, Bend, Dervish, and Malcolm McWilliams, the ex Shadow Runner formerly known as 2D, received the message from Brianna McCreary. Danny McCreary had been admitted to the hospital late the previous night, after a coughing fit ended with him unable to breathe. Upon diagnosis, the problem was revealed as terminal lung cancer, in a very late stage. Danny had long been a chain smoker, but the lifestyle was finally catching up to him. It was a shock that it was catching up to him this fast, but the doctors thought it was a side effect of his bioware muddying up his cell structure. Either way, he only had a few months to live the team arrived at Danny's hospital room to pay their respects. They were dressed in their best suits as an homage, although 2D wore his flag pin, a mandatory accessory for high-ranking Raz personnel it was an awkward meeting, mostly because Danny had been something of a shitty fixer, none of the bullshit that they dealt with under, say, Taka, but he operated multiple teams out of a bar, and it showed, not even an office with a bar as a front, he had literally tended the bar while he fixed. He also hadn't done his research on more than one occasion, leading to fiascos like the Jet Black incident and the original Raz run that had kicked off the two times story. So, the team was understandably tense and uncomfortable as Brianna McCreary cried over her dying father, condemned to a hospital room for the last few miserable weeks of his life. Danny himself was extremely profane and ill-tempered, due to the swift nature of his untimely and looming demise, but mostly he was just tired, very tired Geppetto was the one who sprung the question first, who's going to fix for us now? Brianna turned to Geppetto as Danny drifted into sleep I will, I'm new to the field, but I've learned from a lot of my uncle's mistakes, that is, if you'll have me, sorry, I'm happily married. The entire team stared angrily at 2D. Bend commented, sex jokes for the niece of a dying man, 2D, really, fuck you guys, I'm making six figures, besides, Danny loves sex jokes, I'm sure he's laughing in his sleep, Brianna and the shadow runners stared 2D down oof, okay, whatever, Dervish spoke up I, for one, would be happy to have you fix for us, Brianna, we've got a good relationship going, and I'd hate to start from scratch, Bend nodded me too, I didn't have any problems with Danny, personally, so you don't need to promise me anything. Both of them looked expectantly at Geppetto, who shrugged sure, there are worse fixers, 2D pouted and I'm the insensitive one. The team milled out of the building in their suits, making their ways to their respective vehicles. As 2D hit the clicker on his vanity sports car, he offered, oh, so did you guys hear? I got a third kid on the way, I can tell it's gonna be smart kid. Dervish cocked an eyebrow as he donned his motorcycle helmets and adopted daughter and a freaky RE that thinks it's a little boy do not count as kids, 2D, even if you're legally their dad. Geppetto added, opening the door on his sedan. Dare I ask how you have come to the conclusion that your child will be smart? 2D beamed proudly hacked its wireless node yesterday. It's already developing rudimentary system iconography. Bend gagged a little a frequent occurrence when confronted with 2D as he opened the side door to Geppetto's sedan. The near death experience of the two times run had changed him significantly. In a life reforming measure over the team's vacation, Bend had taken up pacifism as a legitimate philosophy and converted to Buddhism. As a surprise to him, his magic had reacted adversely, a second awakening of sorts. He'd manifested all sorts of weird little powers, and was using the team's break time to discover the dervish side as he revved his engine fucking techness. Wakefield, West Yorkshire, United Kingdom, 2062. It was Dylan Cadbury's 20th birthday, and he was spending it in a prison cell. He at least had the cell to himself. His cellmate had been a Caribbean man, a yardy type. He'd pissed off a couple of yaks and didn't last long. They'd found him in pieces in the prison sewage Cadbury was serving life for a string of robberies, culminating with an attempted bank robbery in London in 2042. He had been 18 then. He'd grown up on the mean streets of Edinburgh, a Scottish punk with a head for logistics only constrained by his lack of formal schooling. He'd played to the local chaps and other disaffected orcs working the Leith district dockside. He'd pulled together a little gang, got them working tight, working professional. He handled logistics, just an orc kid with a head full of numbers and a want to hurt some people, to fight back against the big racist bug fuck that was the British government and make some cash on the wayside but when he tried the bank job it all fell apart. He'd done all the numbers right, he knew he had, he'd measured out the thermite properly, he'd handled the guns, he knew no one would snitch it turned out it was a tip from the costume shop owner he'd bought the clown masks from, fucking prick. A sterling career as a criminal cut short, 
2042 should read 2062 in the last post, whoops, Dylan had a visitor, his parents were Catholic, and hard working dock workers, they'd been heartbroken when they found out what he'd been doing, disowned him, his parents weren't visiting him, so who was Dylan decided to humor his visitor, donning his orange jumpsuit and exiting his cell to the escort of armed guards, he snorted, his porcine mouth contorted in an expression of contempt, a guard shoved him with the butt of his gun, same old, same old the man on the other end of the bulletproof glass was Irish, pink and pudgy, he wore an expensive suit, tie, and waistcoat, and his fingers were studded with rings, as Dylan approached, he asked, Cadbury, Dylan Cadbury, Dylan sat down and looked tiredly out at the mystery man and who may I presume is asking for me, a friend, how'd you like to see the world, Dylan, did you come all the way from Tinarnock to taunt me, Irish, I'm not getting out till hell freezes over, maybe a little earlier if the queen takes a fancy to me, the Irish man scoffed, and produced some paperwork that he pressed against the glass look, Dylan, myself and a few, acquaintances, reviewed your, work portfolio and found it to be very, very convincing, we're prepared to pull some strings, organize a parole hearing, Dylan blinked and pressed a little closer to the glass bloody L, give me a look at that, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, those are real, they told me I was going away with no chance of parole, they could reconsider if you just do one little favor for us, Dylan, name it, we need you to wear the mask just a few more times, rather, it should read 2060, god damn, he's been in prison for two years, Atlanta, Georgia, Cass, 2068, wildcard approached the outside of the bank of the confederacy main office, running a hand over his face, feeling absently at where his tusks had once been, what a strange, overgrown thing cosmetics had become, moreover, if he no longer resembled an orc, would he still self identify as one, this was a question that wildcard frequently pondered, he pondered a lot of things, ever since the mob had hired a black surgeon to put a preposterous amount of extra brain tissue into his cranium, once naturally gifted at mathematics, he was now a machine custom made for robbery, he handled tactics, logistics, the upkeep and workarounds for security tech and updated security procedures, mafia politics and safe houses, and hacking. On top of this, he was a backup gunman, and the team's getaway driver, as he operated out of a custom sedan equipped with a mobile terminus nexus. He also had the equivalent knowledge of a master's degree in economics and was fairly good with renaissance history. That latter bit was especially nice to help him understand just how unique his new mask was a plaster carnival mask custom made by Venetian artisans, reinforced with plasteel and all the latest spy tech truly. He was a sophisticate amongst bank robbers. He announced into his subvicle, in his thick Scottish accent, Belfast, report in, Belfast in position, I'm at the security room now, Belfast was Wildcard's right hand man, an Irish elf who was in a similar contract to Wildcard's, both of them had a quota to make for the mafia, and goddamn if they weren't going to try to make it rook, report in, rook reporting in, drone borers in position in the vault, setting up the sat link for you to jam the secondary biomonitor signals, you're going to need to run alarms, though, I figured out they switched him up, they're a redundant system now, go through the security network, excellent, rook, no change, Belfast, you'll be going 5 seconds prior to the established time, Roger, rook was relatively new, they'd picked him up a job ago, in Richmond, He'd held his own as a demo expert and rigor, and he wasn't bad as an infiltrator either Sonny. How about you? I'm good. Holding tight in the lobby. Alright. I'm coming in. Belfast. You're up in. Now. Sonny was the new guy. An independent contractor they'd picked up in city. He was as of yet unproven. Wildcard was deeply interested in seeing how he'd perform. Which is why he was on crowd control f four dragonflies equipped with high power torches and decoded drills settled onto the vault door as Belfast jacked his own sat link into the security nexus. Wildcard hacked it from a few rooms away, disguised as an inconspicuous businessman working in AR. While Belfast went to town on the two surprised security spiders, dropping his invisibility to stun bolt both of them with a flick of his fingers. The elf announced, deadpan, through his own green harlequin mask. Bang, operation is go. The drones began to circle the vault door, carving out the joints and creating a loose curve to cause it to fall forward into the vault room where 30 seconds late, Belfast, announced wildcard. What's the hold up? I'm getting a wireless signal, somewhere nearby. Not an alarm, but someone might be calling the coppers. That doesn't make any sense. 
no civilians where you are, and anyone else would try to hit the silent alarm. Activate your smart jammer and try to find the source. Rook can get the loot. I hear you. Belfast out. Rook here. I'm in. Jacking into the banking nexus to download the cred. But you need to run crowd control now. I had to cut off connection between the front terminals and the nexus, so the tellers are gonna catch on real soon. The cred sticks are also gonna ring like bells the moment I leave the vault. Wildcard made eye contact with Sunny from across the lobby, then peered over to the tellers. A few were poking at their AR screens. Confused righto. I'm thinking we kick this up a notch before someone calls in authorities who know what to look for. Sunny, you're up. Sunny pulled his mask, a simple smiley face, out of his bag, and on it, he pulled his submachine gun and fired a single shot in the air, screaming. Everyone get on the floor. There was general screaming and panic, and as Wildcard donned his own carnival mask and reached into his duffel bag to retrieve his assault rifle, he reprimanded Sunny procedure would have been to approach a teller and make them announce it. People respond better to figures of authority. Now help me put down the guts, and I hope to hell that you packed the right rounds. Both robbers blazed away as they took down the security guards that poured into the room in a barrage of high velocity assault rifle and submachine gun fire. They concentrated on headshots, as gel rounds were extremely painful but not especially powerful, and headshots increased the chance of blindness, concussion, or unconsciousness. Wildcard announced. I apologize for the convenience, ladies and gentlemen, but I merely needed to assure that you all cancel communications and remain non-interruptive elements during this transaction. If you remain calm, you will not personally come to harm. Wildcard Stacknet registered a man in the crowd pulling a concealed firearm. With a blaze of assault rifle fire, he shattered the man's arm and left him reeling in pain. The crowd screamed and whimpered as he advanced. Kicked the man upside the head to get him off the gun, and then picked the gun up and deposited it in the trash can as I was saying, inconvenience, rather than convenience. I am terrible with typos tonight. Belfast called in. Wildcard put his free hand to his ear what is it? Belfast, this is all wrong. The guards are keeping hidden, and they are using personal comms to call in backup. I can't jam all of them. Coppers could show up anytime. Shit, who tipped them off that we'd be jamming the silent alarm? Rook. Cut and run. Take what you've got. To use the colloquial, we're blowing this popsicle stand. Sunny and Wildcard split for the bank parking lot as the sirens began to sound in the distance Belfast and Rook poured into the parking lot with a set of carrier drones packed down with cred sticks and valuables. Sunny's AR word as he checked exterior cameras. Rook poured shotgun covering fire back into the bank proper as Belfast approached Wildcard that could have been a real clusterfuck. Wildcard. We ready to go? We don't have much longer. The cops are pouring in the front. One thing. Wildcard drew his Raz Predator, pressed it to the side of Sonny's head, and pulled the trigger burn his body. We don't want a data trail. Idiot signed his death warrant when he checked our bounties on his personal comb link. As if I wouldn't hack it. Belfast's outstretched hands poured fire onto the fallen world betrayer as Rook loaded the money into the trunk all right. Gentlemen, let's go. With a roar of engines, a black sedan disappeared into the streets, as the cops rushed back to their cars in a panic. Grenton, Seattle, the 12th of August, 2072. So it's been a year, Dylan, remarked Luca Valici, a professional mob fixer, over Penne Bolognese. Are you still enjoying your freedom? Thinking of coming back to the mob. Wildcard swirled his spaghetti absently with his fork not especially. I mean, don't get me wrong. You've been bloody good friends to me, and I don't intend to disrespect you and your boys, but I've been wanting to go independent. It feels like the free thing to do, to use your own words. Luca chewed thoughtfully so you're going shadow runner. In essence, yes. Wildcard stared at his spaghetti, and then began poking at it in quick, purposeful strikes what are you doing to that poor pasta, Dylan. Seeing if I can make a Fibonacci spiral. I'm bored and I filled up on bread. You ever regret that? Wildcard blinked and looked up at Luca. The surgical scars from his most recent face replacement bulged slightly do I regret what? The brain tissue thing. Becoming a human computer. Not especially. And it's not like I can reverse it. Just seems like you've lost a lot of personality since the first few jobs. It's been 10 years. Luca. People change. Fibonacci spirals and spaghetti or number. Luca chuckled I've got a tip, wildcard, if you want it. Shoot, 
Luca took a sip of his wine I know you don't want to work with the mob no more, but there's a girl, an independent fixer loosely affiliated with the Finnegans. She runs non-mob jobs, so no worries there, but she's in with the Irish enough that I can probably pull some strings. Heard she's only got one team left since the last fixer died, most of them got poached, but she's got a group of some real pros that are out a hacker, you interested. Wilk had smiled and finally took a bite of his spaghetti of course I'm interested. You're one in a million, Luca. He looked down, disappointed. Damn it all, I fucked the spiral up. Tacoma, Seattle, the 15th of August, 2072. Brianna didn't want to stay in the bar in Everett. There were too many bad memories associated with it. So, she'd sold it, and used the proceeds and some of Danny's accrued fixing payoffs to buy out a nicer bar. The establishment in question was Basil's Faulty Bar in Tacoma, and she'd bought it from the old fixer running the bar, Abe Heap, so he could retire to a simpler job than fixing, namely, actual bartending and mixology, because that's a thing that bars do. The place had an old shul Irish pub aesthetic, one that appealed to locals as well as runners wildcard couldn't have been happier with the appearance of the bar. How quaint. This would be quite the adventure he knocked twice on the upstairs door, and a woman's voice called come in. Wildcard stepped in to see two elves and an orc sitting in chairs around Brianna McCreary's desk. One elf, an albino in a dark suit, asked, so you're the new hacker. Wildcard nodded hacker, driver, backup samurai, I don't do rigging, though. The elf nodded soberly as the orc stood up. The orc was a massive specimen, taller than Wildcard and bulging with muscle. He wore an American flag bandana and motorbike leathers dervish. Pleased to meet you. We hear you come with recommendation from the giant Ellis. That I do. And I'm pleased to meet you boys in turn. You can call me Wildcard. The other elf. An inconspicuous looking sort in a grey suit with a prayer bead necklace around his neck. Stood up and bend. Reckon and be. And that's Geppetto. He's our mage. Hope you don't mind working with a fairly black hat group. Wildcard frowned to find fairly. Geppetto stood with a toothy grin well, that's me, mostly. Brianna coughed if you boys wanted to get to know each other better, I've got a milk run lined up. Dervish waved a hand dismissively no need. We've got our own initiation ready. Ben blinked I didn't hear about this initiation. Geppetto pent his fingers with a cruel smile see, about that, we never actually initiated you, either, Ben. Ben edged up next to wildcard I swear I have no idea what they're talking about. Brianna sighed try not to kill the new hacker or your infiltrator. You too. Geppetto smiled back, and in a saccharine voice, responded. No promises. Wildcard gasped as the bag lifted off his head. He was in a dark room, tied to a folding chair, with no memory of how he'd gotten there. Geppetto sat across from him in a big black lunger, clutching the armrests in classic evil villain fashion. Dervish flanked him, with his arms crossed, both were only partially lit wildcard groggily turned to his left. Bend was tied to another chair next to him, equally confused. Bend looked at wildcard with the kind of panic that only not knowing what the fuck is going on can bring gentlemen, said Dervish, booming loudly, welcome to the initiation, what the fuck. Geppetto stood up, his red eyes glinting. His loafer heels clacked as they tapped across the ground you do not get a talk, wildcard, not yet, not until we have blown your goddamn minds. Dervish walked behind wildcard and bend, and there was a threatening clinking noise before he began to approach them from behind. Ben squirmed, reaching for his concealed knife what are you going to do to us, we are going to teach you about, the system. Wildcard's mouth dropped the what, dervish reached around both captives, holding a small bottle of vodka in each hand. He pressed each bottle to the lips of a captive drink. Rookies. Geppetto continued a great man once told me that our consumerist society runs on greed. And on inferior services that we are expected to be thankful for. This man was wise in ways of the world far beyond you. He recognized how people are increasingly marginalized. Heard it through all stages of our society like cattle. Like sheep. They bleat and feed from the trough of mediocrity. It is up to us to be their liberators. No. Their saviors. Wildcard attempted to loose another what, but was too busy not drowning in vodka. He was already beginning to feel it messing with his brain we are the heroes that the world of light needs. Agents of the exalted shadows. We will bring peace to our fractured society through a task of great importance. Bend hiccuped watch. Wash it ashk. Geppetto leaned forward and gripped Ben's shoulders we are going to rob a PF Chang's in North Tacoma. Wildcard burped loudly thash bullshit. 
Geppetto stared down his nose dismissively at Wildcard it's not bullshit, Wildcard, it's revolution, Isha PF Changsh, and this PF Changs will be a victory for our glorious surprising, like the red lobster that fell before it, what's more, you and Bend will be our planners, but we're drunk. I don't see the relevance of such states in respect to the glory of the revolution. I can't plan when AHM drunk. I have seen a self professed master criminal fail this test while sober. If you can't do it shit faced, then you have no place on our team. Fan. Limitum. Wildcard attempted to stand, and pitched forward onto his face, with a year. Ben followed suit Dervish looked at Geppetto don't you think this is a little mean? I have not watched TV all month. It was this almond controlling two hobos into a bum fight for entertainment. I'm a little afraid of climbing into a car driven by a drunk man in a clown mask. Dervish. That is the smartest thing you've ever said in our career as shadow runners. Let's let the man with the clown mask to his car so he can drive us drunk to a mid-price chain restaurant. The team sat in the inconspicuous black Hyundai in the faulty bars parking lot, only to find the whole thing done up with safety rigging like out of NASCAR. Seat belts. Seat belts everywhere. To say nothing of the concealed armor plating that was visible from the inside. Wildcard sat in the driver's seat, but didn't even start the engine um. Wildcard, Geppetto settled into a seat in the back, and clipped one of the mirrored seat belts. Why aren't we moving? Not until you put on our ill the sheep belch. Slurred Wildcard, I wanna drive shafe. Geppetto dutifully put on the rest of his seat belts, all six of them, and Dervish put on Ben's before doing his own. Geppetto nodded toward Wildcard okay, we're good, are you? There was an immensely loud vroom as Wildcard started the engine. Geppetto paled that doesn't sound like a Hyundai engine. Thash cause it I shan't. Define isn't. Acceleration and speed much. Racing tier turbo changer. And, I, uh, nitrash. Geppetto gulped holy fuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
Oh, can it, old timer. Devish and Wildcard took cover from the SWAT team behind the front counter of the PF Changs. The police officer was handcuffed to the front of the counter, functioning as an involuntary human shield. The SWAT team's laser sights danced across his burly body as they tried to find a free shot, causing him to squirm and just compound his own problem. Bent commented over the comb, from by the car, uh, guys, the route to the car is still clear, if you can, you know, make it without being shot and all that, wildcard glared at dervish through his mask, hunkering up with his back against the counter you incredible asshole, how do you let him get you, I am just as disappointed as you are, hang tight, I've got an idea, wildcard pointed his gun at Geppetto you, blonde lady, get your shapely ass over here, Geppetto melodramatically gulped and began doing his best bimbo walk towards the counter. When he'd gotten close enough, Wildcard slipped behind him, put an arm around his waist, and stuck his predator to Geppetto's head look. Coppers, I make IT out, this woman goes free, I've got enough wires in ME to tweak like a wallaby on speed, I will pull the trigger before you can put ME down. Geppetto screeched, oh no oh oh oh, stay back, he'll kill ME. The cop handcuffed to the counter wore a face of the utmost disdain really? You're doing the mage thing again. Dervish shrugged. Not my idea. Wildcard. Hostage in tow. Tilted over a few tables to give Dervish soft cover to escape alright. We'll be leaving nice and peacefully. Nice and. With a funk. Dervish launched an underbarrel flashbang right into the SWAT team. Wildcard dropped Geppetto and broke into a run fucking leg IT. The team sprinted into the car under heavy fire from the SWAT team. A few stray shots pinged off the back of the car as the team began working on the buckles. Geppetto fucking drive. Wildcard. Wildcard not until you buckle up. Bend or man. This is gonna sue you luck the car took off towards the freeway at top speed down the opposite lane of traffic. The night errant SWAT team disappeared into the distance behind them. But two police interceptors pulled in behind the car oh. You wanna play. Coppers. Dodging wildly around oncoming traffic. Wildcard drove up the wrong freeway entrance. Before ramping a center divider to get to the right side of the road. One of the interceptors followed. Only to get boned by an incoming truck pulling onto the shoulder. Wildcard gunned it up to well over 200 miles an hour. Putting everything else on the freeway to shame and kicking up an unholy amount of gravel. The rest of the team's gums flapped as they tried to sit up straight, but another interceptor pulled in ahead hold the fuck on. Wildcard slammed the wheel to the left, literally spinning the car like a top across multiple lanes to avoid the interceptor. The interceptor cut across the same lanes and skidded against the divider in the center, before writing itself behind Wildcard's high and I time to really pull out all the stops. Geppetto screamed, you mean you weren't pulling them all out to begin with? Oh course not, you take Emmy for an amateur. With that, Wildcard punched the red button labeled numbers. The entire team's screams were drowned out by the roar of engines as they neared 300 miles per hour. Wildcard began dodging speeding cars as if they were stationary objects, activating his wired reflexes and schizophrenically drifting back and forth in short, controlled bursts of steering as Wildcard neared the next exit. He swiftly threw the car into a spin, slammed the gear into reverse, and then began driving in reverse at top speed down the freeway exit. Geppetto screeched, what the fuck are you doing? Wildcard didn't answer, and instead pulled off the freeway in reverse only to immediately slam back into forward and merge illegally across lanes into a street that he had no business merging into. Almost immediately after exiting the freeway, slowing to normal speeds, Wildcard pulled into a nearby parking garage, and circled his way to the top. Without a beat, he undid his seatbelts, stepped out of the car, and began running over the rear of the car with a tag eraser plucking off RFID tags and trackers before tossing them into the beds of passing pickup trucks somewhat belatedly. Dervish screamed. Woohoo. Wildcard leaned toward the car and looked at the sack that Bend was carrying so what's the haul? Bend peeked into the bag up. Three necklaces, five wallets, eight cred sticks, and a designer watch. I'd imagine that's about enough to get the bullet holes out of the rear of my car. Dervish smiled I guess that makes this a successful run. Wildcard opened Geppetto's door, leaning over him so, do I get the job? Geppetto tactfully responded, blue ha ha gla blah. or, my pants. Shadow run story time 10 end. 
Well, I must say, uh, you know, if TD is actually leaving us, Wildcard doesn't seem like a bad replacement character, as all characters go, like, you know, and it just takes a bit of time to, like, get a feel for the characters, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you don't love them overnight, you know? But, like, you know, I don't know, I always say this at the end of all the Shadowlon parts, like, you know, oh, I love getting to see different parts of the universe and all that shit, and I do really enjoy it, and it was really nice to be able to see, like, you know, some parts of the UK, I thought that was pretty cool. But, uh, hey, we're on uh, part 10 now, isn't it? Yeah, this is part 10. So uh, we've got another 10 more parts to go. So we're only on the halfway point, which is fucking pretty mad, if I'd be honest with you. Uh, so we've still got quite a bit. So, like, you know, if you're on part 10 and you're listening still, how have you not hit that subscribe button? Just just click that subscribe button, you know what I mean? And, like, you know, see if you hit that wee notification bell, you'll stay up to speed with all the new videos and all this. Like, you know, I don't know. Um, I think, if you haven't already, I think it's definitely something to check out. Because, you know, if you're on part 10, as I say, you must enjoy it, you know, to a certain extent. So, like, you know, click it and just see what happens. You never know. But anyway, look, as always, guys, hope you've enjoyed. Um, as I say, do the Shadowrun Weekly. Same with um, the Cold Shoulder and all that. So, like... I'll see you then, alright? If you haven't already check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. This... This is, is not okay! This needs to stop now! This is cancer! This... This is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back! And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay! Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?